Ina no sa mane shate ya Mane ni ana ni ana no sa la ba so ya ya E ya ya na ni ana no sa de ka sa ba no sa Ina no sa mano sa ya Kingdom come, kingdom come, kingdom come, thy will be done. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. True nobility in life is knowing the Lord and walking in his way. The most glorious pursuit of mankind is walking in God's image and likeness. It is our utmost desire that you will be richly blessed as you listen to this message from Living Scroll Ministry, a.k.a. It's the Bible Network. For more life-transforming messages, please visit www.livingscrollministry.org. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. Praise the Lord. Can we bless our Father? Can we thank Him for... Can we bless our Father? Thank Him for another day. Shabbalata, ekutuli shabbalakata, ekutu malata. Jesus, we honor Your name. We thank You for today. King of glory, worship You. Thank You. Jesus, we honor your name. Thank you. We honor your name. Hallowed be your name, Father. A righteous Redeemer, a Savior. Shalatali Kata, Akatali Shabalata, Ekutuli Shibili Kata. In the Bolota Malakata, we Bolisha Balata, a Kutu Malanta. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, our Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor your name. In Jesus' name, I want to put our hands together to sit down. In Taranos Hall, Akure, Ondo State, Nigeria. This is a supremely blessed day of April 2024, 28th of April, as we round up tongue for the month of April, our 10 days worship intercession and governmental decrees. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our Father, we bless you, we thank you. Thank you for all that you are, all that you do in us. Thank you for all that we have in you. Father God, thank you for grace. Thank you for glory. Thank you for the power of your name. Father God, thank you for the power of your love. Thank you because you lead us day by day. Day by day, you shower us with benefits and even the things that accompany salvation. Thank you for our lives because you are leading us gloriously. Thank you for the ministry of angels. Thank you for the eternal salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you for daily provisions. Thank you because you have given us the earth to provide for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to appreciate our Father once again. We are not clapping very well. Are we tired? Praise the Lord. Last uh, month, we started a teaching series on spiritual weapons. And today, by the help of the Lord, we are going to look at volume 2. Last uh, month, we looked at uh, two core foundations of spiritual weapons and spiritual warfare. We looked at uh, training. We looked at leading and training. Praise the Lord. And today, we are going to look at the three dimensions of our warfare. And uh, by the help of the Lord again, maybe from next month, we may start looking at the weapons themselves. Praise the Lord. So last month we looked at uh, spiritual weapons. And we looked at uh, the core foundation to spiritual weapon or to spiritual warfare. We talked about leading, we talked about training. 
And today again, we are looking at the three dimensions of our warfare. God defend his cause. Not your cause. The power of God back his plan, not your own plan. I want us to keep that one somewhere. God defend his cause. Not your cause. The power of God back his plan, not your own plan. God defend himself. God defend his own cause. That's why this uh, iconic word from uh, St. Augustine of Hippo say the truth is like a lion. You don't have to defend it. Let it lose and it will defend itself. You don't defend God. God is in your life. You don't try to defend it. God can defend himself. How? To bring it home. You see, when God speaks to you, that's why God is not always afraid to declare the end from the beginning. He said, this is what I want to do. Because he knows that no power can stop it. You know, sometimes I have a plan. Oh, don't tell anybody, oh, you know, those things. And it's common in Nigeria here. Yeah. Maybe somebody just wants to travel abroad. Ah, don't keep, don't tell anybody. If you tell them, you know, say the fowls of the air, before you know it, they will spot your plan. But God is not like that. Remember the story of Joseph. God showed him from beginning, small boy. He said, the stars, the sun, and the moon will bow to you. He told his brother, they said they hated him. The first, the first one hated him because his father loved him. Genesis 37. And then God now again to add insult to injury. God now showed him the vision. He now went and told his brother. That he saw that they were binding sheaves like that. You know, they planted something. His own grew. And their own grew too. And did obey and bow down to his own. He said, are we, are, you go, are we going to serve you? He told them. And then they went. They now, they now went into action. And then Genesis 37 verse 18. He said, look at. When the father sent him to go and meet his brother. He said, look at that dreamer. Let's kill him and see what will become of his dream. You can't kill a dream that God brought. Praise the Lord. You see the boldness and the confidence that we have. God defend his own. If you have a vision that this vision is from God, God is the one showing me this thing. You should know that God is going to stand for it. God is going to defend it. You can't take it out of you. That's why we say God defend his person. God defend his own cause. Praise the Lord. You see where your first confidence should start from? Not from you, but from God. You know, as God showed you something, how am I going to do it? You start looking at yourself as the doing it. God is the one that will do it. All you need to do is to align with him. And he will do, he will do the working out. And then if you go to Genesis 42, when his brothers came, when during the days of famine, when his brother came to Egypt and they bowed down to him, the Bible says, Jacob, Joseph, remember the dream. And he saw them and said, let's kill him and see what would become of that dream. Amen. Men cannot congregate against God. You see, the best effort of men against God will end up being their best effort to serve his purposes. Their best effort to stop God will be their best effort in what? In advancing the cause of God on earth. You see our life? You see where we are aligned? Praise the Lord. God will defend you and defend your cause when you are one with him. Now we are now bringing it home now to ourselves. God will defend you when you have become one with him. You, are, you see the story of Abraham. When kings rose up against him, what happened? What happened? God rose up to his defense. When we walk in the light of, uh, of oneness with God, Pastor Nameka preached a message about uh, three years ago. Oneness with God. When you become one with him, God will defend you as he defends his, his, his own self. You know, you have become one with him. So defending you, defending you is defending himself. So it was not as if Abraham was one man that God just went to see. Abraham had become one with God. So when you touch Abraham, you are touching God and that God will rise up and fight. Now God himself is a man of war. You fight, you are inviting him to the warfare. In just like those days, you want to go and fight David. He said, you, all your life, marshal your best plan and go and stand against David. You will fall. One time, he said, when the people be, uh, against him were too many, the Bible said the trees, the trees rose up and started fighting the cause of David. Trees. It was a tree and that hooked up Solomon's son. Trees. We are standing at the very holy ground. This life that we have been given, 
this call that we have all come to embrace is a hollow and a holy ground can we give ourselves to it that's all, all that god requires give yourself to it and then let me do the rest and we work it out you know his father rebuked him when joseph had that dream and he was telling you know the first one he told his brethren the second one he told his brethren and he told his father that the sun the moon and the eleven stars are bowing down to you you know what his father said do you intend that we should bow down to you it's not his intention this is the intention of the father do you intend that we all of us will bow down to you your father your mother and your brethren but well, that's what eventually happened praise the lord so let's run with the intentions of god let's run with the mind of god you become unstoppable nobody can defeat you in life praise the lord so when we are calling men come to god come to the true light and then they are dancing around here and there they are not serious you're joking with your destiny one day the devil will just rise up and eat you like vegetables yes don't think because because of me because david i ah, know they no. god defend himself if you have become one with him god will defend you simple simple formula it doesn't matter how you are born again you are a child of god and all of those things like that praise the lord doesn't matter what you say it is what you do that makes the difference you see how these things work you see how this life now you no, know, we say that uh, God is always uh, quick to declare his mind, to say what he wants to do. And we say this in the course of this uh, conversation that, why? Because he's the sovereign God. God speaks from his sovereignty, absolute power. You see why there is no fear? God speaks from absolute what? Power. Say, this is what I want to do. That's why I called the David, small boy, put oil on him that you are going to be the next king. King Saul went to went to work that he wanted to stop him from becoming king. The king did this or see? He marshaled the entire national army so that he can put David down. At the end of the day, he went it down and David went off. You see the things that God is speaking to you. Oh, God told me this one. Know where that word is coming from. That word is come. God speak from sovereign power. From sovereign power. The only power that exists in the universe. That's where that word is coming from. When he said, I will be with you. He said, go, I will be with you. Just go. Praise the Lord. Whatever man does and whatsoever the devil does cannot affect his word and his plan. That's why God gave, he sent his son as a, as a baby. You know, as a, as a weakling. Jesus came here. You can catch him and slap him. You can kick him. You can do anything you want to do to him. He sent him there and they, they rejoice from hell. This is our opportunity. Our lucky day. Eh? He said, this is our lucky day. They saw the son. Let's carry him. They carry and they tore him into pieces. Their best work became the best thing that happened to mankind. He said, had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You see how dangerous this God is. Fear him. He sends Jesus. You know, if he came as one Superman, that you know, Samson. He didn't come like Samson. He said, though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lived by the power of God. God sent his son in weakness. They say he came in the weakness of sinful flesh. He sent a weak man in the context of human strength to the earth. And that's why they will kill him. I take it again. Please, for your life, for my life, let's notice. Whatever man does and whatever Satan does, cannot affect the plan of God in your life. It is only the things you do that can affect it. So once you are one with God, no need to fear Satan. Because some people tell you how they have this revelation, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy. There is no enemy when you are one with God. All your enemies become the enemies of God. God will go and fight them. You see some people, they can do night vision. Night vision for the wrong reason. Prayer, fasting for the wrong reason. There's revelation. You know that it can be so common. There's revelation now. There is this one now. They are only seeing it in this other side. The other side of life. Why can't we see it in this other side? God is calling us. He said, come up here, hither, and I will show you things to come. You can't see them talk about that one. You see how it works? Please, I take it again. When we are one with God and align with God, whatsoever man does, this case of Joseph, the case of uh, David, Whatsoever man does and whatsoever the enemy does, while they are doing it, the more you are going up. 
Pharaoh said, let's oppress the, 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 the Jewish people. Let's oppress them in Exodus 1. You know, they were weak. They don't have a ruler. They are scattered in the land. He said, the more they afflicted them, the more they grew and they multiplied. Because the only purpose that God sent them to Egypt was to multiply their number. He said, you are small. If I give you the land, you are small. God sent them to Egypt. I've taught it here before in uh, this message. Higher deliverances. I think volume 4. Why God sent them to 400 years in captivity? Just to God, aggregate them together and multiply their number. It's in that message. It's on YouTube. Higher deliverances, volume 4. God sent them. The only reason they God took them to Egypt was to multiply their number. So whatever they were doing, that number was multiplying. When they became a multitude of people, God said, now it's time for you to go and take the land. Because if they take it earlier before that, they were too small. Praise the Lord. You know, scripture says we can do nothing against the truth, but what? But for the truth. Second Corinthians 13. Please can check up the verse for me. And put it on the platform. You can call it. You can let me know it. So we can do nothing against the truth, but for what? But for the truth. Again, I take it again as uh, we proceed further from here. God speak from his sovereignty. Knowing whatever man does and whatever Satan does cannot affect his word and his plans. Joseph, all his brothers did push Joseph further into the plan of God in a spectacular fashion. They even make him more spectacular. David, all that the king did, King Saul, pushed David furthermore into the plans of God, you know, gloriously. Jesus, all that Satan did, pushed the man Jesus furtherward, furtherward, into the purposes of God for mankind. Paul, his enemies and God's enemy beheaded him, but they couldn't behead his letters. The letters became as powerful as the person of Paul. Paul was resurrected in his letters. Fear God. When they beheaded Paul, they could not behead his letters. This is just letters. You know, when you behead the man, if you see the letter, you just throw it aside. God took those letters and God resurrected Paul in those letters all over the world. Paul is everywhere. He became, he became omnipresent. He's omnipresent, they call it. He's everywhere. I'm sure there are nights that you slept with Paul. Just reading his letters. You see what God does. All your, all your enemies, all the enemies of God and his people. Here, God is sovereign over you. Your best effort against God would be your best effort helping his purposes and his people on earth. Fear God and worship him. The church in the Acts of the Apostles. All that the people who hated God and his church did resulted in more glory for the church of jesus christ he said the word of god grew and what and multiplied three thousand five thousand and then coming now and then you and i whatever man and satan throws god has said those things will push you and i further in the plan of god for your life and for my life yes you see all things work together for what for good for them that call god they that love him and accord according to his purpose. Only that we should abide in the abiding one, the Lord your God in Jesus Christ. Just abide in him. Praise the Lord. Are we together this morning? This is a word of comfort. This is a word of strength. Three dimensions. Now look at three dimensions of our warfare. Now let me ask us now. Who is the father of warfare in scripture? Eh? The father of war in scripture. Warfare. Who? Eh? I talk now. I'm hearing your voice. But it's not loud enough. Eh? Go Bola. Eh? Bola say God. Okay. Who else? Who is the father of war? You can say this is war. Those ones that will carry a, a job bone of an ass and will sleep with a thousand Philistine. Abi? With an ass. Or the one that will carry a sword and, and carry a catapult and pull down a Goliath. Or... <laughs> who again? Eh? Who is the father? You say David. David. Okay. Who else? I'm hearing God. I'm hearing David. <laughs> yes, Samson. <laughs> uh, second option, Samson. Okay. One more try. Uh, uh, my sister, yeah, your mouth is moving, but it's not. It's not speaking out. Eh? Have you turned to Hannah? Hannah's mouth was moving, but nothing was coming out in the Bible. Eh? Opposed to Paul. Okay. 
Eh? Okay, Uncle Sam, say Jesus. Okay. Eh? <laughs> I've had Paul, I've had the David, I've had Jesus, I've had the God. Who else? Eh? Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So you leave that one and go to another topic now. Eh? You want to know that one? I, I like I like I like human beings, you know. When you stare them up, they don't allow you to move. Okay. The man uh Uncle Shino said the, the you say God Abby. I think reading when from... you ask who is the father of faith in scripture, you not tell me it's God. Who is the father of faith in scripture? Abraham. And who is the father of warfare now? You are saying God. Who is the father of uh uh what else should I mention again? So uh, hey, well speaking in context of among the saints among the saints i will, uh, go, I will go with david okay you will go with david yes all right praise the lord the father of warfare in scripture is what we are going to look at the person's life and look at the three dimensions of warfare and it is no other person than abraham himself <laughs> can we put our hands together <laughs> <laughs> All of us went around and avoided Abraham. What did he do? Eh? Maybe the last time he visited him, maybe he didn't give you food to eat. Eh? Uncle Nathaniel. Eh? He didn't entertain you, Abby. Eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. That, that man was awesome. Abraham brought the revelation of Yahweh Sabu, the Lord of the armies to earth. God had not followed man to battle before. It was in the life of Abraham. Yahweh what? Sabu. Was Abraham that brought revelation, that pulled that revelation out of God for us. God followed him to battle. Before Abraham, who had gone to war before? God had been everything to man but not war. In Genesis 14, that was where we saw Yahweh Sabu, the revelation of the God of war, the Lord of the armies. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we'll explain it further. We see the three dimensions of war. You know, Abraham, three dimensions of war that Abraham fought. And the three dimensions of war that is open to us. We knew Abraham all along as a simple man in scripture, simple, quiet, and submissive, but not fearful. Not fearful. He was a man of faith. Even before Pharaoh and Abimelech, Abraham was not fearful. You see it in the book of Romans. Because Abraham understood warfare. Abraham knows the war that he will fight and he knows the war that he will leave for God to fight. Praise the Lord. Look at Romans 4, 18 to 21. You know, the New Testament shed light on certain experiences in the Old Testament. Romans 4, chapter 4, verse 18 to 21. is says, who against who believed in who, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform it. Did you see fear here? Eh? Abraham knew the if Abraham was it was a complete man when it comes to spiritual warfare. All this is while in the New Testament. I will see it all in the life of Abraham way, way back then. I said Abraham used a simple wisdom. I will explain it later. He used a simple wisdom on Pharaoh and Abimelech, leaving room for God to fight the battle himself. Abraham knew his own battles and he will fight them. God should fight his own battles. God sent him out so God should defend himself. God should defend his own cause. Now I will say from the beginning that God defend himself, right? Yeah. And God defend his own cause. This is the same Abraham that they just told him that your, 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 your cousin, Abi, your cousin, your adopted son, Lot, has been taken captive. What did he do? Did he contemplate? Did he think twice? He carried his trained men and went and confronted five kings. Does that man look like a fearful man? He went and confronted four kings. From Genesis chapter 14, it was laid to rest that Abraham was never a fearful man. And that scripture where Romans chapter 4, 18 to 21, shed more light 
on this truth of Abraham's strong warring spirit to war with man and to war with God. Whoever comes, Abraham will fight. Praise the Lord. So these are the three dimensions of our warfare. What was the last statement we made? I said, whoever comes, Abraham what? Abraham will fight. When four kings came, what happened? Abraham rose up and he fought. That was the first dimension of warfare. When God came, Abraham rose up and he fought. That was the second dimension of what? Warfare. And what's the third dimension? I'll leave that one. Let me explain the first. You see, there are three dimensions of warfare. Number one, when you stand before Satan, when you war with Satan, when you war with God, and when you war with people of your own kind, you don't apply the same principle of warfare. So if you just leave one now, carry the same principle and go to the second one, you will fall flat. When Satan come, Abraham rose up and fought. Those four kings, they represent Satan. When the evil one came, when Satan came, Abraham fought. When God came, Abraham rose up and fought. Praise the Lord. So number one, there is a warfare of might and power. When you stand before Satan, is power. Satan only answer to power. Power. So if you don't know power, you are going to sink. In the day of the evil one. Satan only answer, only respond to power. So if you don't know that warfare, where you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the evil one. That's the first dimension of warfare. The second one, God. I say when God came, Abraham rose up and confronted God manly. He, that one is the war of communion. Yes, communion. It is the war of what? Communion and supplication. The way you want to get something from God. I say it's war. I call it war. Because sometimes you have to engage. It is the war of communion. The principles of that warfare is different from the first one when you confront Satan. It's the warfare of power. He said, Behold, I give you power to trample on snake and scorpion, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Satan only responds to power. You can't negotiate. You can say, Please, maybe tomorrow go. Be. He only answer to power. If there is no power, then you can't stop him. He becomes unstoppable. You only stop the evil one with power. You see the warfare of a believer. So all you know about warfare is, you know some people all their life, that's the only warfare they know. Uh, issue, Satan, and all those ones. That is one dimension of warfare. Is that one is even at the lower level. There's the lower, the lower middle and the upper chamber. It is the war of what? Communion. The third one, we see it again in the, I'm going to explain all of this, I'm just giving us the, the background. Abimelech came, and Abraham rose to fight and collect back his well of water. That one is a war of light. Abimelech came in light and Abraham rose up in light. That's the warfare of light. When you are engaging men, you know, this that one is another dimension of warfare. When you are engaging men, you know, human beings like that, you think the way you fought, the principle you use on Satan is to not work with men. Satan you can bind, but men you cannot bind. They will bind out evil spirits, they cast them out. Those same men, when they stand before men, men will slap them. You remember all those apostles? Yes. Eh? Even Jesus himself. Before he comes, all these demons are screaming and they are running away. But Jesus will stand before men, they will slap him, they will carry him on their head, they want to go and throw him down. So when you engage men, you don't do the same principle. If you don't understand all of these things, all of these channels of warfare, you cannot fight a good war. Life is warfare. Praise the Lord. Certain thing, you see, when God speaks to you, I'm, I'm still going to teach you this particular one, you know, some of uh, this day. I was thinking I'll take it on Friday, but we have to speak on some other thing. When Abraham, when God spoke to Abraham in Genesis uh, 12, God gave him his word, gave him his promises and everything. But there were things that God did not tell him. How they were going to possess that land. Did God tell him then? Did God tell him then that they were going to fight war? Yes. They were going to take the land by what? By the sword. By warfare. Did he tell him then? But warfare was inside that war. And I've told us here before. How was the Israel as a nation? That Israel was born where? Israel was born what? At the time of war. In Genesis 14. When uh, that was when the Jewish nation was born. When uh, God told the uh, when they say there was war, Genesis 14, 13, 
and they are taking Lord captive four kings. And the Bible says, one came and told Abraham what? The Hebrew. And then he rose up to go and fight for king. And that was when the Jewish nation was born. It was born in what? In warfare. And that was a prophecy that how he's going to build that nation, that nation that God promised him is going to be by the sword. Chase all those people land and take your land and become what? A nation in that land. You're going to steal famous kings. Praise the Lord. So let me take number one again. What do we say is number one? The three dimensions of our warfare. I say, what, what came in four kings? Abraham rose up to fight with them, to fight them with his servant, Meherdas. And I told her it's a war of might and power. And I said, that's symbolic of Satan. When the evil one comes, and Satan only answer to power. How do you step out of your house with his men, given simple training in war? To confront professional killers who are just destroyed five train, uh, four trained professional kings, and then they are destroyed six territories. Praise the Lord. And it was in this warfare that the, the revelation of God as Yahweh Sabo, the, the Lord of the armies, was born. All this one you see, the Lord of the host, the Lord of the army. This was where it was born. God followed Abraham to battle. The Lord of the battles. Praise the Lord. Again, now what do we say is number one? power yes number two i said god came number one satan came and abraham rose up to fight him with power that one is his is all power he carried a sword and he went after them killed all of them he carried sword that one is pure power there is nothing there no conversation no negotiation no nothing it's pure what power that's it when satan comes if your strength is small, he will oppress you. He will oppress you. You see why Ephesians say, be strong. You see the first thing, that, the teaching of that warfare, they started with strength. Say, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you, don't, if you are not powerful, you can't stand the evil one. That's why I say, don't go anything. He said, behold, I give you what? To start this journey, you need power. Please don't joke with it. Whatever you need to do to get this power, it's not anything else, so it's just to walk in the light of the power that is we have. In the light of the power of God. Do it. Praise the Lord. Satan came and Abraham rose up to fight the war of might. That warfare, the stronger person will take the day. Yes. So where the stronger will take the day. Number two, I say God Himself came. And Abraham rose up to fight God in the what we call the war of what? I use the word fight in quote. Please put a quote inside. To fight the war of what? Communion. Yes. The war of communion. You see it in Genesis 18. Genesis 18 verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham in the plains of Mamre as he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. I jump to verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. Verse 22. And the men turned their faces from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. How do you fight that kind of war? But praise the Lord. How do we call it the war of what? Communion. A supplication. I, I continue my reading 22 23. And the men turned their faces from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? This one, you want to go and bind. You want to go and take anointing. You, you cannot use anointing on God. So that warfare is the warfare of communion, is the warfare of supplication. Praise the Lord. Verse 31. When he was supplicating, and behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Paradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty sake. Verse 32. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet, but this once. For adventure, ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way. As soon as he had left communion, can you see the word communion? 
As soon as he had left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Now, there's a history here. Remember this same land, Sodom, it's about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. When kings came to destroy that land, what happened? Abraham rose up, took his sword, and defended that city. Now God himself came to Abraham that I am going to destroy that city. Amen. Will he take his sword? Eh? Will he take his sword? Abraham did not. Abraham took another kind of sword to save that city again. And he told the sword of communion. He said, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? For adventure they attain. That is the warfare of communion. He said Abraham defended that city once from Satan, right? But he used power. But God himself showed up again that I want to destroy this city. And Abraham rose and fought the warfare of communion to save that city again. Praise the Lord. So Abraham confronted God in the war of what? Communion. Your power with God is the power of communion. Can we echo it together? Again? Look at Hosea chapter 12. Remember the story of Jacob? He said, by his strength, he had power with God, right? Uh, uh, Jacob too was another man that rested with God. It, it, the scripture used the word rest to. That was the warfare of what? Is it the first warfare? Is it the warfare of power? Yes. It was the warfare of what? It was the warfare of communion. Look at uh, Hosea chapter 12, verse 2 to 5. The Lord has also a controversy with Judah, and we punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his doings, will he recompense him? He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Yes, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in battle, and there he spoke with us. Even the Lord, God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. You see the war? He said he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in battle and there he spoke with us. That is the warfare of communion. You will lack power. Take it again. You will lack power if you don't know this dimension of warfare. The warfare of what? Communion. When you commune with God, when you engage God, that was the same warfare that this man did, uh, Hezekiah. They say, God say, pack your load, pack your load, you are going. Now it is God that came. I say, when God came, it's Abraham rose and fought. fought but it was the warfare of what? Communion. If it's Satan that came, you know what to do. I didn't mean Satan that came to Ezekiah. Now, Satan you can bind and cast, but God you cannot bind and cast. He said, he turned his face to the wall and he wept. He said, remember, remember this thing that I have done, done, done. The prophet was going outside. God sent him back. Go and tell him that I have added more years because the man has prevailed. You see that warfare? It's not every warfare that is binding, binding, binding. There's an enemy somewhere. There are some is God you are going to take on. You take on God. Why? Okay, let me correct something. Why I say the father of warfare did not mention Jesus. Jesus was not a man. Right? He became what? A man to show us the way. Uh -huh, so that's it. Uh -huh, so the faith, we have, that's why we call Abraham the father of faith. Uh -huh. Not that his faith is superior to the faith of the son of God. But we are looking amongst men. So, so you can see, even Jesus too fought this war, this warfare of communion. In John 17, he said, Father, I wish that all this would be with me where I am, right? That they may behold my glory. The glory you have given me as they what? As your son, that where I am, there they should be also. He also that, um, what did he say again in that place? That they may be one as we are what? One. That's warfare. When you engage God, Another man that fought this warfare again is Moses. He said, don't destroy these people. Now, okay, if you want to, Kikuma came it. Kikuma what? It's of, this warfare is of, 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 of communion supplication. He said, there he made supplication. He said, that angel that said, uh, they say Jacob prevailed over the angel. It's not because of physical, maybe he has more strength. It is what? He, he has his communion, his supplication. That, they say, he made supplication unto the angel. And then that he bound the angel, the angel could not leave. The same thing happened to God and, and Moses. He said, Moses, leave me alone. I want to destroy these people. Moses held God. He said, leave me alone that I may destroy these people. Okay, if you want, before you destroy them, destroy me. I'm not saying don't destroy them, but kill me first. And then brought me out of your book of life. Then go and kill them. Ah, that was a tough call. Where you, where you, where you, 
when you contend with God. Give us another example. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 12 to 14. This which warfare have you been fighting since? Eh? I want to ask you. It's a rhetoric question. Answer it in your heart. Which warfare, which has been your the major warfare that you've been fighting all this while, all these years? Your fasting, all those when you fast and engage war. How do you call war in uh, Yoruba? Ogu. The Ogu that you've done. Ogu. <laughs> Ogu that you've done all this while. Which Ogu have you been doing? <laughs> the three dimensions of warfare they are the lower level there is the high ground which warfare when you fight from the high ground the low ground becomes a walkover it's the who is did that with his word he cast out demons with a word you know that jesus continue all night in prayer to god when he continue all night in prayer to god when he comes to meet demon principality and power he does not need to continue all night just with a word and he cast them out Hmm. You see how these things work. So when you are calling men, come and pray. You know, if you call them, it's sure. Come and if you say something, let us fast this one. Let's know God more. Let's be deep in the God. See, the people will not come for that prayer. If there is a revelation, they have seen something that this and that that uh, three people are going to fall down in this place or something. Somebody destined. You see that person be filled. You see prayer. May God deliver us from ignorance. Does that warfare exist? That warfare exists. But there is a better road into warfare. When you will fight certain battles now, you don't need to fight them again. You will have moved to higher ground. Some people are in the same ground, fighting the same ground. For the next 30 years, they are fighting the same battle. When you ought to have moved to higher ground. Where is the Lord? When kings should come out of your loins, you are begging kings for bread. When you should be father of kings, you are looking up to kings. Where is the Lord? Are we in John 14? Verily, verily, Jesus said, Very, very, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do because I go to the Father. You see why you do greater works? Eh? It is going to come from the strength of communion. He said, Because I go to what? Go to the Father. He said, He that believes in me, you do the great works that I do, you do greater works because I go to the Father. Look at the next verse. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That will do it. When you ask in my name, you see how you can do greater works. It is from this second dimension of warfare. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, say that, who will do it? He said, I will what? I will do it. When you engage God, so that God can go before your cause. God can go before your life. And before you are po- even your, the things you are proposed, you have put yourself inside. God will go ahead of you. Praise the Lord. By strength, you have power with God. Can you see that word? That was there we read. By his strength, he had what? He had power with God. Yes, he had power over the angels and prevailed. I will teach us this one another time where you can be stronger than angels. Not that your person know that uh, Bola now, I'm stronger than Angel Michael. Right? Angel Michael in his own world, in his own realm, we don't know what he do there, you know. But when when angels come to the affairs of men, men ought to be stronger. Let me give you, he say, he say he had power. He say he had power. Look at that scripture, read it very well. He had power with God, but with the angel, he say he had power over the angel. Over the angel. Where is the Lord? Have you seen it? Verse 3, he said he had by his strength, he had power with what? With God. Verse 4, he, yes, he has power over what? Over the angel. Let me just give you one example, then we'll leave that one here. One of these days we'll do a, a, a more elaborate teaching on that. Remember the angel that came to kill Jerusalem? Right? He came, God sent the angel to go and kill Jerusalem and everything. When God, when David saw the angel, David went and met God. He now engaged this war of communion, right? I am the one that sinned. What has Israel done? Why are you killing Israel? Kill me and kill my household. And leave these people alone. And then God recalled the angel back. You see how David was over to, able to overcome the angel? The angel came in God. You know, there is a dimension in God. There are higher dimensions in God. The Bible says, mercy triumph over what? That judgment is coming from who? Judgment is coming from God, but the judgment that is coming from God, you can use another dimension in God to suppress it, which is called mercy. But you only do that one when you understand this war, the war of what? 
communion. When Esau has lost everything before the father, he switched on this one. He was not claiming right again because the right is gone. He said, Father, if there is but one blessing for me, bless me. Esau switched on to communion. That's how he got something. Can you see? God will send an angel, do this thing for you and everything. The angel will come. All that the angel will do is that assignment. You cannot negotiate with the angel because you have come to do that work. But you can go to God and the God that sent the angel will record the angel. Praise the Lord. Another person in scripture, Job's power with God was the power of what? Communion. Job. If you look at Job 42, verse 5 and 6, where after God has, after he has talked, 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 said so many things, and God came and God spoke to him. And then Job replied, I have heard of you with the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. He said, Therefore I abhor myself, I despise myself, and I repent in dust and ashes. You know what God did next? After, after that one, the God now told his friends, Job went, go and meet Job. Let Job pray for you. Job entered another dimension of power. How did he enter? God came and said, stand up as a man. You are talking, talking from money. You're just saying things you don't know. After God finished speaking, Job just hands up. He said, it should not be hard that I even spoke at all. He <laughs> said, I repent in dust and in ashes. And look at God's response. Verse uh, 7. And it was so, and it was so that after the Lord has spoken this word unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My anger is kindled against you and against your two friends. For you have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourself a bond offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept lest i deal with you after your folly in that you have not spoken of me the things which is right like my servant job has and so verse 9 job 42 so eliphaz the temanite and bildad the shuhite and zophar the nematite went and did according as the lord commanded them the lord also accepted job and the lord turned the captivity of job when he had prayed for his friends also the lord gave job twice as much as he had before that, this is very profound. You see why I say in God you cannot suffer loss. You can't suffer loss when you are with God. Twice as much as he had before, verse 11. Then came there unto him all his brethren that left him came back, all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house. Some of us will not forgive them. Eh? Some of us will not forgive them. Now God has turned things around, now you are coming now. You've chased them away. Amen. May God give us the heart of this righteous man. Amen. He said, they came back, they ate bread with him. The person that ran away from him in the days of the affliction, he's coming back now. Eh? Eh? <laughs> Is it this heart of this man? He said, verse 11, Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters, and all they that had been his acquaintance before, his friends before, and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Can you see a dimension in God? Whatever your past has been, where you stand with God now, He said, You can bless it more than where you are coming from. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 6, camel, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand sheep asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, and on and on. Verse 15. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their children. After this, Job lived 140 years. And saw his sons and his son's son even for generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Praise the Lord. God extended the life of Job because of the time he has lost before. God gave him physical extension. Not that to live long ago, God extended his vigor, his vitality, his youth. Not that he live long, live as an old man for a long time. God renewed his strength, his life, and, and his vigor. And then Job lived 140 years more. You see what God can do. So I said, another man that fought the warfare of communion is who? Is who? Job. The, the third dimension of warfare, please listen very well. Abimelech came 
the three that came say satan came right abraham what rose up to fight right power god came abraham fought abimelech came and abraham rose to fight and collect back his well of water a war of light abimelech came in light praise the lord abimelech came by revelation you know that's in genesis 20 when uh, abraham was living in the land and uh, abimelech took his wife in genesis 20 and god appeared to abimelech he said you're already a dead man you have taken a man's wife and that man is my prophet see what god told abimelech in genesis 20 he said i don't know he called his servant and returned back abraham's wife and he left that was genesis 20. but this war that i talk about the warfare of light and the war of covenant when you fight when you fight men fight them in covenant this is the warfare of light and covenant that one is in genesis 22 when abraham engaged abimelech in the war of light and covenant the warfare of truth now let's go back i say abimelech came in light genesis 20 let's go and read it but abimelech took abraham's wife that's one genesis 20 and abraham journeyed from there toward the south country and dwelt between kadesh and shore and and sojourn in gera and abimelech was the king of gera verse 2 and abraham said of sarah his wife she is my sister and abimelech king of gera sent and took sarah verse 3 those kings were poor just see like topper's wife now and yeah. eh? just see topper's wife now you just send and go and carry her <laughs> my name my name gave a very wonderful testimony about his wife uh, they've been for so long you just carry her now they just see you just carry they just see her now who is that lady you just go and carry me eh? <laughs> you just go and carry her <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> so that I can find the one of light. The three, the three. You, you find the one of power, light, and uh, God, everything together. Eh? Amen. Amen. If you want to know whether I know how to fight, touch sweet, sweet Lord. Eh? Who, 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 eh? <laughs> we switch on, switch on all the dimensions of war. Hmm? Eh? All the dimensions of war. Eh? Amen. It is that time you know that the God, the Lord kill and He make it alive. There's a dimension in God that kills. Eh? Amen. All right. As on the light time, we'll, let's come back to our scripture. Genesis verse twenty. We are reading verse three. God came to Abimelech in a dream by what? By night, and said to him, "Behold, you are but a dead man." For the man whom you have for, for the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife, not an ordinary man. God continued. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will you slay also a righteous nation? You know he has reached your communion. Is Abimelech. Verse 5. Send he not unto me. She is my sister. And she, even herself, said he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart. An innocency of my hands if I done this. You know, I taught us on Friday when we were speaking. Please, uh, Ujima, please give us that message. That Friday. Yes, go and extract it out. Myself, Emeka's own, and every other person. I think Pastor Topper spoke last and separate the messages out. He said, We, we, we pray with intelligence. You let us pray. You just start scattering the ground. But you don't even know what you are saying. There are some prayers that are transactional. Remember, you want to talk about Jacob. He said, if the Lord will keep me, Genesis 28, in this way that I will go, you will give me food to eat and raiment to put on, and you keep me safe that I return back to my father's house in peace. That was when he was running from Esau. He said, then will the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set up for pillar will be God's what? House. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth of all. You see prayer? You see transaction? And then God honored that prayer. If you go to Genesis 31, when Laban was oppressing him, the angel came and gave him wisdom for economic breakthrough. And God prospered him in the house of Laban. And if you journey further again to Genesis 35, God, God sent him back. He said, God said, God said, go back to Bethel. Where you spoke to me and raised up an altar. And he went back to Bethel again. That's when he said they should consecrate themselves. He said, change your garment, wash yourself, change your garment, told his household 
let us go to Bethel and offer sacrifice to God. Because when he was running away, he set up that pillar and made that prayer to God. And when God had taken him, had done everything for him, has fulfilled his word, blessed him and fulfilled everything. When God was when he was returning back, he has forgotten to go back there. God sent him back to Bethel. He went back to Bethel to raise an altar, and that's where we got this name El Bethel in scripture. He said, the God of what? Better. He said, this house will be God's what? House. That was when he was running away. When God had kept him, giving him food and raiment, giving him protection, giving him sons and daughters, giving him a household. When he was coming back, God said, go there and open an, an altar. And he raised up that altar in Genesis 35 and called it El Better. And he acknowledged the God of Better that God has done these things. You see, pray, you see walking with God is not zigzag, it's not anyhow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Can we continue? Verse 5. Okay, Abimelech said, I've done this in the innocence of my hand, right? Look at God, look at the reply. And God said unto him in a dream, Yes, this is inside the dream. Oh, the man that was they were having this live conversation inside the dream. They took reality and took it inside dream, and they were having it as conversation. And God said unto him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did it. You did this in the integrity of your heart. God acknowledged what he said. For I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I allowed you not to touch her. Look at verse 7. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet. And he shall pray for you and you shall live. And if you restore her not, know you that you shall surely die you and all that are dying therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all the servant and told all these things in, the, in their ears and the men were so afraid then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him what have you done unto us and what have I offended you that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin you, you have done this unto me that ought not to be done now, you see why I, say, I just give this foundation before we jump to Genesis 21 to tell us the third dimension of warfare. When you fight, when you engage men, you don't fight all men the same way. Are you hearing me? Uh, Satan is very effective. Satan defeats you easily when he comes inside men. When he fights you in men. Because if you don't understand how to fight that battle, you that have not, you are bounded in, you, are, you have casted out 30, you have casted out the 30 what? Legions of spirits now. But here he will defeat you like what? Like an ant. Like trampling an ant. That's why you must understand all the dimensions of warfare. And the principle governing them. Praise the Lord. Now, in Genesis 21, that, that, that's where the story is. Abraham dug well. And they came and collected the well. In Genesis uh, 21, we are going to 21 now. Abimelech, Abraham, servant, dug the well. And they say Abimelech's servant came and violently took it. But you know Abraham kept quiet. He didn't say anything. Are you hearing? Okay, let's go and read that scripture. Okay. Verse 21. And Abraham, no. Verse 22. And it came to pass that it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, spoke unto Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore swear unto me here by God that you shall not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto you, you shall do unto me and to the land wherein you have sojourned. You see this Abimelech? I'm all spiritual. He came and met Abraham. That I know that God is with you. How did he, how did Abimelech came, come? He came in light. You know, God showed him who Abraham was. He said, This is a prophet. So he knew the strength of Abraham. And of course, they will have heard how Abraham defeated four kings. So he knows that if Abraham wants to fight him, Abraham will lick him out. So he came and met Abraham. Please, please, don't do us anything. Swear to us. Let us have an oath. Verse 20, 24. And Abraham said, I will swear. This is where now, verse 25. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servant had violently, violently taken away. Now, this is the one I'm talking about. When they took it away by violence, did Abraham fight? Did he fight? 
Yes. He said they came and took it by violence. He could afford the servant of Abraham. Abraham allowed them to take it away. Know when to fight your battle. And then know with whom to fight your battle. Abraham did not engage them. But when Abimelech came, Abraham engaged Abimelech. Verse 25. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servant had violently what? Taken away. And Abim verse 26. Abimelech said, I know not who has done this thing. Neither did you tell me, neither yet had I of it, but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech. And both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven young lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What meaneth these seven lambs, young lambs, which you have set by themselves? And he said, For these seven lambs shall you take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have dug this well. You see, light. You know, Abimelech came in light, and Abraham rose up and what? And engaged him in light. Let us set a covenant. I brought seven of them that you will know that I have dug this well. Verse 31. Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because there they both swore, both of them. And they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech rose up and fired called the sheep captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. I said, A war of light. For Abimelech came in light, and Abraham answered him back in what? In light and in what? In covenant. A war of truth and what? Covenant. Now, note this human beings are covenant. How do you defeat Esau, a man with the covenant of Jehovah God in his life? You see how Jacob collected it from Esau? He said, Swear to me, right? Can he use force? Let me kill Esau and then I'll take the best right. What did he say? He said, For the take a party, if I'll give you a party, is it transaction? Is it the warfare of light? Jacob used a higher light to collect what? To take the covenant away from Esau. He said, Swear to me by God. And he swore. And then the better right became Jacob. How do you fight Esau and to collect that better right from him? I take it again. How do you defeat Esau, a man with the covenant of Jehovah God in his life? Even after Esau fell out of the covenant, God still gave him a portion of the covenant. That's why I say, I gave Monser to Esau and to his descendants. Then number two, you don't lift up your hand against King Saul without repercussion. A man with the covenant and the oil of God on his head. David fought King Saul from light, but with a higher light. You know, King Saul was fighting him, but David fought back. But it was not the same means he fought back. Look at the man that killed. Say, I took the life of Saul. What happened to that man? Maybe killed man. If David had used his hand to kill King Saul, that would be have been the end of David. Somebody too will kill David on the throne. That's why I say, don't fight all men the same way. Human, like human beings are covenant. So you must engage them in covenant. This is the war of light. When Jesus said, when they slap you on one sheep, what did you say? Turn what the other sheep. That's the human being. But when a demon mistakenly slap you, finish that demon. Praise the Lord. That's why I say Satan, demons you can bind. Holy Spirit. But human beings you can't bind them. So the way you overcome a man, if you have a husband that is misbehaving, it's not the same way you fight evil spirits, you bind and cast, you are binding the man. You are binding the man not to go and commit fornication. Hmm? Binding the man not to go and see another woman. Praise the Lord. So human beings are covenant. You engage them in what? In light. A different dimension of power than the one you use on fallen spirit. Note, Abraham did not fight Abimelech. Abimelech's servant. When Abimelech's servant took the wells from him violently, he waited, but rose up to fight for it when the right moment came. Know when to fight. With whom to fight. And how to fight your battle in covenant. He didn't just come. Abimelech just came. It's now your own. It's now your own. Tell all your servant not to take it. He said they did the what? The covenant. Abraham brought seven young lambs and he slaughtered them. And they made a covenant. It was made sure unto Abraham. And unto this day, they were Beersheba belongs to the seed of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Abraham got back his well. You don't take back anything from Abraham as you cannot take anything from a man who is in alignment with God. A man who is one with God. Take it now and you will get it back later. If you take what belongs to me, I will get it back. Praise the Lord. 
Again, the three examples to give. You what we set down in what? In power. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Say you shall be able to give you power to tread on serpents and scorpion. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give you power to tread on on them. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of all manner of sickness. When Satan comes in brutal force, you meet him in overwhelming force. Are you hearing it? Praise the Lord. To Satan, you must appear as a violent man. Don't be a gentleman. When even sometimes might be human being around you, but Satan has come in man. Satan can come in man. When he come in man, don't say this one like uh, when we we're doing uh, in our life uh, school, right? That uh, when we we're in our mentorship school. Remember when somebody raised a question that uh, a lady she stays in a room, she shares a room, a room with another sister, and that sister will now bring the boyfriend and to be staying there in the middle of the night. You understand? And you want to now go and wear the fruit of the spirit, allow them to be doing nonsense in the same room where you two you are sleeping. Amen. When Satan appears in man, you rise up and fight, right? You are under authority. Go and report the person. Go and report the person to the same authority that all of you are serving. And she took that step. We gave her that advice. Go and do it like that. She took that step, and that's how the matter died. They even made a law that nobody should be coming. No young, no man should be entering female room in that organization. You don't pamper the evil one. When you know that, wash it. Oh, if it's if it's just a man, if it's man, man, there's a way. Okay, there's a dimension of of you know of of life. There's a dimension you can switch on, you know, to to address that issue. But when you know that Satan has entered, Satan is here in person. Judah, it was Judas before, but this day Jesus looked at Judah, it was not Judah. He said, Satan, that which you want to do, go and do it quickly. So Satan had entered inside him. So to Satan, you must appear as a violent man. You must be a sword man. Carry sword, the sword of the spirit. Ephesians 6 17. He said, carrying the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. That sword you slay. Number two. You walk with God in what? In communion. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. He said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. No fellowship with God. The joy of staying with God, abiding daily in communion. There you settle major, 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 major things there. It is there you can reverse certain things. You know, somebody that God has been telling you, have been on the person to go to go to uh, go to uh, the right lane, and the person has consistently been going to the left lane. It is there you can make supplication to God, and then God can help you know, do all the cry you can cry and supplication and do all the transaction there, and God can reverse the person's course and somehow move the person to the right course. There's no end to what God can do, amen. Yes, God can see, God can still reach anybody. Number three. You walk with men in light, in truth. He said, But you shall receive power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in all Judea and in Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Power to witness. You witness unto men. Praise the Lord. It is a war of light. How do you convert somebody that is in sin? You go and threaten the person. Sometimes, sometimes you come, you know, this person needs love. Sometimes God can let you show love to this person. Some people can preach the gospel to this person. Oh, sometimes, so there are different things you apply to different men. It is the war of light. Oh, somebody is doing certain like, okay, just leave the person. Oh, somebody said, engage the person. So you fight, you engage different people in different ways. You say, John chapter 8, verse 32. You say, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what? Free. Matthew 22 verse 29 Jesus answered and said unto them you do err not knowing the scripture nor the power of God Mark 12, Mark 12 24 and Jesus answered and said unto them the same scripture you do err you, do, you, do you not therefore err because you know not the scripture neither the power of God you said it before you cannot bind men you can overcome them in light in the power of the covenant activating the covenant and that scripture in, in matthew chapter 10 look at verse 1 
Matthew 10 verse 1 and compare it to verse 16. And when he had called verse 1, Matthew 10 verse 1, when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Jump to verse 16. Say Matthew chapter 10. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be you therefore wise as serpent and harmless as dove. Verse 17. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council, and they will scourge you in their synagogue. And you shall be brought, therefore, you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how, how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given unto you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Father who is in you that speak. And brother shall deliver all brother to death, and the father the child, and the child shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endure to the end shall be saved. With men he says you should endure. But with demons he says you should cast them out. Demons you can cast out. But men you cannot cast them. So if you say men, if you are fighting men or Satan has entered into men and you are fighting men, men have become the face of the warfare that you are engaging. You fight them in another way. Verse 23, verse 20. When they persecute you in this city, say flee to another city. Is there any scripture that God asks us to flee before demons or Satan? He said, when men persecute you in this city, say, flee to another city. For verily I said unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man shall come. And fear not them who kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. When Satan comes as an angel of light, with the soul aim to corrupt your human nature, you walk with him in what? In light. Sometimes he comes as an angel of light. When he comes as an angel of light, that's false doctrine. How do you fight false doctrine? By what? By the true gospel. Sometimes Satan can come and corrupt a community, corrupt a congregation with false light. This one is false doctrine. You have turned to the spirit of error. How do you fight in that place? By also, you fight by, by what? By the wheat. By giving them the spirit of truth and light. Some will embrace it, some will not embrace it. So these are the two in summary. You say, walk in raw power and you overcome all devil. Commune with God, number two. Number one, walk in, in raw power and you will overcome all devils. Number two, commune with God and you will, like Jacob, have power with God and with the angel. And number three, walk in light and truth and you will have power with men. You will possess the hearts of men in prevailing power and overcome the dark ways and the evil forces of men in power light and truth praise the lord there's something i did not say let me say it right i just wanted to leave you but let me say it now we said that uh, we said about the uh, sodom right abraham fought that uh, warfare with the sword right when the satan came when god came now, God himself recognizes this, uh, this thing that we are talking about. Remember when uh, God wanted to go and destroy the Sodom? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, I want us to listen here. I want to say something now that uh, will also help us. God wanted to destroy that Sodom. You know, that scripture that says that the heavens belong to God, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. You see, anything that happens in your life, you allow it. Are you hearing me? Anything that happens in your life, you what? You allow it. If you don't allow it, it cannot happen. When God, that's what I want to bring us, I want to use something from scripture, God and Abraham to illustrate it. When God needed to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, God knew that he had to overcome Abraham to destroy that city. So God, when God, God went to fight Abraham, God went to Abraham as a man to engage Abraham in the war of communion. Why did he send angel to that city? You know, Abraham was like a guardian angel over that land. Remember, Abraham has an history with that land. He risked his life, his, uh, his boy is there, Lot is there. And Abraham risked his life to save all of them. After that warfare, when the king of Sodom came, he said, Abraham, uh, give me the person and take the goods. Abraham said, I don't want to take anything. Take the people, take the goods and everything. Then they went back to that land. Like that. So now, 
God himself wanted to destroy that city. Then God came to seek, God sought the permission of Abraham before he did it. He said, can I hide from Abraham that thing that I want to do? Amen. Why? Not again. Abraham has a history with that land. Lot was there. And then two, Abraham risked his life to save that city. And then God will just come overnight and just pull the city down. God does not work like that. He said, God does nothing without telling his servant the prophet. Why? Because the earth has God given the sons of men. So if God himself wants to come to earth, he comes and takes permission from man. Are you hearing me? God is the sovereign God. He's the owner of the heavens and the earth. But he has put the earth in the custody of man. So if God is coming into the earth, God will come into the earth through what? Through man. And that's why when God was one to become a man in the person of Christ, he came to what? He came to Mary. He came to a man. A man. Even when God wants to become a human being, he didn't just become a human being and just showed up in the earth. There is a doorway to the earth. Human beings are the doorways into the earth. So if Satan wants to do anything on earth, God, Satan will seek for a man. He will use men to enter the earth. If the deep God wants to do anything on earth, God will come through the doorway. The doorway to the earth is man. So nothing, absolutely nothing can happen in your life without you opening the door. He said, I stand at the door and what? And no. So you are the doorway to your destiny. You are the doorway to your life. And you are the door by extension. We are the doorways to the earth. So when God wanted to destroy, he said, the report of Sodom and Gomorrah had come to me. So when God came, God came and went, God went to meet Abraham as a man in the warfare of communion and engaged Abraham while he sent angels into that city. God, God overcame, to, for God to destroy that city, God had to overcome Abraham. No, Abraham was the strong man of that land. So he said, until you bind the strong man, you cannot destroy the land. So God went to bind the strong man. He engaged Abraham in the warfare of communion. Abraham, this is what I want to do. Would not the judge of all the earth, will you not do right? If there is uh, 50 righteous men, will you destroy them? I will not destroy them. Until Abraham exhausted his weapon, he said 10. If there is 10, will you destroy them? If I find 10, I will not destroy them. And when Abraham exhausted himself, right? Exhausted himself, exhausted his strength, exhausted his weapon, you know, in that warfare, then God took the day. And the Bible says, and God left off communion with Abraham. And then those men went and destroyed that city. You see? Praise the Lord. I said, the Lord sent angel into the city and went himself to comfort Abraham in a war of communion. To bind a strong man on earth who had connection with what? Sodom. Praise the Lord. Abraham was a resistant. God went as a man to overcome Abraham as a man. He said, let us reason together. Produce your strong cause. Bring forth your strong reason. That's what they said in Isaiah. That's what God went to do there. Amen. I said this, God has given the earth to the sons of men. So for God to do anything on earth, God will come to what? Man. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. I thank you, God bless you.